Okay. Good. Yeah, I try my best. I know you do, baby. I know you do. I try my very, very best. I get very <laughs> tired, you know. Do you? I get, I'm very old. <laughs> are, are you not that? Billy, don't say that. I'm, so, I'm sitting here with my friend Billy Conley. Hi. Hello. Who most, I guess, my audiences know you from Head of the Class yeah. and, uh, and Billy, the mm -hmm. show that you did. They don't know, however, that you and I have played together on more than one occasion. We have indeed. We, we did the Brooklyn Academy of Music, That's and we right. met at Nelson Mandela's thing in London when That's Nelson Mandela was still in jail. That's right. You think yeah. he got out because of us? I, I reckon we had a direct access to the man. <laughs> Some of the people obviously did. You know, they were saying, Happy birthday, Nelson. They must have thought he had television in his cell or something. <laughs> <laughs> did you notice that? Yes. They were Happy very birthday. earnest, too. Like, they fixed him to say, Nelson, baby, how you doing? You know, do you want to say? Hey, look, he don't know you. <laughs> he he hasn't seen your movies, honey. <laughs> God, but we had a good time. We had a ball. That's what I met. That's what we met. That's we? right. But then you, when we did Brooklyn Academy of Music, yeah. you were doing a film. You yeah. got on an airplane. Yeah. You got on my birthday. On your birthday. Yes. See, I the didn't longest know that birthday of my life. Why? Because the day kept getting longer. You know, the the, the day lasted 36. Because as you come west on Concord. You arrive in New York at the same time as you left London, <laughs> but you've been seven hours, or you've been four hours in the plane, so you, your birthday goes on and off forever. It's a great idea. If well, you ever have a birthday, get on a plane and go west. <laughs> your, your birthday lasts all bloody day. You get, if the plane's fast enough, you get younger. And on that note, we'll be right back with Billy Conley. <laughs> That's right, and you know what else you did on the plane? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to bring it up afterwards because it's my favorite. That's my favorite. <laughs> you want to check his pockets, you know? Oh, we're back. Yes. We're back with Billy Conley. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Now, Billy, I just want to get into one more thing. You were talking about getting on the <laughs> on the Concord. Something interesting happened on the Concord to you? you no, no, I don't remember. Yes. That little air that you let loose? Oh, yeah. Well, yes. that wasn't actually in the Concord. Uh. That's, that's been another place that went. It wasn't me. It was a man who had been to... We were, I was flying to... Was it Hong Kong? No, I was going to Australia. And, I, and the plane at Singapore, a man came on. And he was coming from Hong Kong and going to India or something. You know, the Australian flight from Britain is like, you visit the whole world. So... There's one seat that's beside me, and he said, did you ever fly on Cathay Pacific? And I said, no, but I believe they're very good. He said, oh, exquisite. He said, do you know what we had for dinner? And I said, no. He said, barbecued goose. I said, well, that's very strange. He said, it was exquisite, with spring onions and ginger and soy sauce. It was unbelievable. I said, that's great. The man fell asleep. We took, <laughs> we took off in the plane. <laughs> God, I can, I can feel it today. <laughs> <laughs> we had got through the clouds. You know that, that shaky bit? That. We're, we're through that, and we're in the cam bit. I was just starting to relax and looking for the, where the chair adjusts, you know. This man <laughs> farted. I, I will never forget it as long as I live, because he was in a funny position. He was all like this, you know. <laughs> and so his, his, his ass, his backside was facing me like that. And it went, and it was the longest, like, ever. And I'm so, and people were turning around, for God's sake, you know, because it's first class. Oh, please, behave. But they could only see me, because he's... he's Nightmare. I had to run into economy. It broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Billy, only to you do these things happen. It's, it's, isn't it odd, though? It, it does. The, the weirdest things. I've been telling audiences lately that when you get the famous face, people behave differently. Strangely. Yes. But sometimes it's like being in a play with Harold Pinter. You know, people come up and say odd things. Like what? I was in an elevator in Liverpool, and I, as you know, I used to have a very long beard. Right. 
and a man. This is, this is a bit I can't get used to. When guys say awful things to you because you're famous, you know, they, they, like people will say, you look better without your beard. And yeah. I say, you could lose some weight off your ass. And they, and, and they take offense. <laughs> <laughs> but but this, this man said, I could see his face looking at me in the elevator like this. Because elevator is a bit like toilet behavior, you know, you kind of don't look directly at right. anybody. Oh, that's like a male thing. Yeah, that yeah. male, that urinal kind of behavior, you know. The, you, know you check him out first to see if he's got a chainsaw or something, but yeah. then you just look at the door. And, and this, this voice said, you look better without, your, what was it? You look different without your beard. I said, I should bloody hope so. I said, if I shaved and looked the same, I'd be really disappointed. <laughs> Life gets really odd. It does get odd. Because they feel completely free to say this to Yes, you. but you must have, ex I mean, this has been going on, this is what, 25 years? So 25. For but you. the 25 years, I, I was a folk singer first. I was a, a banjo player, bluegrass and old-timey banjo player in Scottish folk groups and all that. <laughs> Kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> we shall overcome all that, right? And uh, all that Pete Seeger -y stuff, right, right? Through the Scottish and American folk music, and auto harp, and ding a ding ding ding. Actually, I wanted to be Hank Williams. You know that basically the driving force was to right. become Hank Williams eventually. You know, and yodel and wear a big hat. And uh, it didn't quite come off. Uh, uh, the, the fun kept getting in the way. You kept having too much fun. I kept having enormous fun. I thought it was brilliant. Because I had a kind of miserable childhood. I, I was brought up by two aunts who uh, fell out with the idea after a while. This happens a lot. Yeah. People will adopt a child, a relative. Uh, my, my, my parents' marriage split. And they sort of brought me up. And then they were both single. And they thought, my God, we're trapped here with these kids. And, and they took it out. And me, ah. and I think that happens to lots and lots of people. Right. But because there's, nobody's ever instructed on how to do this thing right. properly, they just charge in. So I decided to make my adult life a bit more interesting than my childhood. So you've been having fun. I have had fun for the whole time. All of my adult life, it's been brilliant. Of a, you know, all that hair and charging around, sleeping with strangers, <laughs> and the time <laughs> of my life. But really, you know, but before all that awful diseasey stuff, like the 60s and the 70s when penicillin ruled the world, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, it's, I love you and I love you too and we love everybody, yee And a ding a ding ding a little ding And playing the banjo is unbelievable, you know, you, when you're married, you're in the room playing Cripple Creek. Right. Ding, 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 ding. And, and your wife's outside saying to the children, shh, your dad's busy. I mean, it's like dying and going to heaven. You know, <laughs> no, it's wonderful. You know, it's great to hear because so often people are so upset about their, their childhood that they become these uh, sort of bizarre adults. But yeah, but there's bizarre and bizarre and bizarre. You can let it sit on your back like a big yeah. rucksack, if yeah. you like. And it's very easy because it does weigh down, it weighs you down and you have to confront it and fight it and become an adult. Yeah. But I think people whose parents eh, are very, very nice to them, they have to fight with that too. You, everybody has to become themselves yeah. eventually. Yeah. And sometimes it's a mollycoddled childhood that takes a lot of extricating yourself. Uh, you know, yes. some, sometimes it's difficult for people who had a good time. Baby, what is a mollycoddle? Oh, mollycoddling is like, uh, is, is you, take, you, you, you keep your child wrapped and oh, cotton-wooded, molly oh, Nothing's see. allowed to ever happen and no loud noises and right. don't play with rough children. Stay home with your mama. And, well, you know, molly coddling. It's a good word, isn't it? Molly I like coddle. it. Molly coddle. Yeah. You're going to teach me some more words when we come back with Billy Conley. Molly oh, coddle. Words. Whoosh. <laughs> Whoosh. It's good. Well, it's actually the country one. The, 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 the pigeon that lives in the country. Is what? Is a cushy doo. 
We're still talking about words. It's, we're here with Billy Connolly. We're talking about words. Oh, a yeah, it's a cushy do or a cushy. And people in the, in the towns in Scotland call pigeons do's. They drop the cushy. The people in the country drop the, the do, and the people in the city drop the cushy. But some people call it a cushy do. <laughs> and some people just call it a cushy or a do. You know? No, but you you live here now. Yeah. Finally, we got you over here. Yeah, it was your fault, really. No. Well, when I came to do the the thing with you, the HBO. Right. Well, some people in Disney saw me, and wanted me to do a thing. It didn't come off. We tried a thing, and it didn't work. But the the word got out from that to the people from head of the class. Right. Who wanted me for that? We went from head of the class to Billy, and right. and and, and it, I thought I could come here and work. And live and then, there. Yes, no. But hey, my wife was about three feet behind me with all the cases, <laughs> children. <laughs> and we moved in and we live here. And your kids are going to school? They go to school here, but two of them have got American accents. One resolutely retains the British accent. It's, it's extraordinary. Sometimes I, I, I choose not to think about it. I just go on with my life. But when I look back, it frightens the life out of me, you know. That's HBO and television, and I just had a wee bit in a movie. But there's something about um, America that really, ex I find very exhilarating. The things, I like the things that, that people don't like. When I go home, they say, but aren't they, aren't they ruthless over there? And I go, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! And it's, because I was, I was tell you, I was at Warner Brothers, and the, the, the series, it was uh, head of the class, and it finished on a Friday night. And I had my Winnebago and all that nonsense. And uh, we finished, and the guy at the door, good night, Billy, good night, see you later, all the best. Ah, lovely, ha, 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 friends, friends, friends. They had a sale on the Saturday morning of all that Warner Brothers t-shirts and watches and all that stuff. I thought, I'll go down to the sale. <laughs> I wouldn't have drove down, who are you, do you have a pass? The whole thing, my name was off the car park, the Winnebago was gone. And everybody thinks that's cruel and awful. I think it's brilliant. You know, you clean the house and start again. You know, it just made me laugh. I went home, I said, you'll never believe this. Everything's away, the studio's disappeared. Then they gave me Billy, the series. Right. Hi, Billy, they'll recognize <laughs> me again. <laughs> How you doing? The yes. same guy. No. Yeah, how's it mm. doing? That's great. And we all started again. And I think the trick, the trick is to recognize that. Yes. for what it is and deal with it. Yeah. Stop pretending the man's your uncle. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's not your friend, he just works there. Now, when you, when you were touring, you did a lot of touring with the rock and roll bands. Oh, God, yeah. I hated it. I hated every single second of it. Really? In the 70s, I did a lot of it. I did, uh, oh, no, when I say I hated every second, I didn't. Uh, the Elton John tours were... They were awful for me. They were great for him, and it right. was nice. I know Elton, and I've known him for a long, long time. And it was lovely being on the road with him and all that stuff, but the audience just ate me alive. And then I was reading Rolling Stone, and Tom Waits had been touring with Loggins and Messina or somebody, and he said how much he hated it, and, and uh, he put it, a nightly exercise in terror. And I thought, jeez, I'm not alone. There's yeah. somebody else. Yeah. And so I, I just got on with my life, but I vowed I would never, ever do it again. I thought you had to do that. See, yeah. there was no comedy then. There was no, no comedy clubs and all that stuff. There was only, like, comedians had bow ties right. and all that. So there was, there was very few of, of this, this kind of comedy right, around. Right, right. And, and I met Robin then. I did a talk show in Canada. Right. And Robin Williams was on it, and, and it was, God, it was a relief to meet another nutcase on the road. He said, I'm an actor, but he was doing all this. <laughs> this is like, oh, great, there's another loony out here. I'm not alone. And then I loved it. I started meeting more American funny right, people, and it right. was brilliant. But that rock and roll stuff is, is, is for, it's brutal. It's for them. Yeah. It doesn't belong to us at all. Gee whiz. I don't think so. Do you, do you think comedy belongs out there? Well, I, you know, when you do an arena, <clears throat> I don't see how you can, how people are listening, because number one, they can't hear you. It's difficult to and talk they, to a man with a frisbee, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it is. Yeah, right. And on the Elton John tour, it was worse. The man who announced me, he would say, ladies and gentlemen, they'd go, ah! Madison Square Garden, they'd go, ah! and big, a big ball would appear. 
a big beach ball would start bouncing towards you. I thought, oh, God, it's a thing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Elton's our friend! <laughs> and they wouldn't even hear your name. <laughs> 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 Boo! Get off! 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 Yeah. Oh, no! Yeah. Oh, dear. Awful. Nightmare. Not for human beings. And people have the temerity to say, you must have learned it would take the rough edges off you. <laughs> it nearly took the head off me. It nearly finished me. I oh. hated it. It took me years to get over it. Well, see, I, you know, now, I did... I knew I'll never do it again. Never ever. I did a New Year's Eve show in New York at like, I think it was the Felt Forum. Right. This was a terrible mistake. I come out on the stage and the, I, you figure my feet are here. You know, this is my foot. And here's the person's head. Okay, that's the front row. And then it goes up as you Right. Know. And you come out and you pick up the thing and you say, so, and this guy sitting in front went. <gasps> <laughs> There's nothing you can do. There is nothing you can do. But now those days are somewhat over. Most of us are now oh, straight. Yes. I thought I killed someone the other night. I was on stage. Where was I? San Diego. And there was a woman in the front row. And, and her, her friend threw a blanket over her head. I thought, my God, the woman's dead. I, and I, I think there was something wrong. She had a blanket on her legs, this woman. And I think the woman was, her friend was tidying the blanket and went like that. I thought, I thought Christ, the woman has died. I thought it was one of those, you know. And I went away over, but I think the woman was kind of sick or something. But she, right. but she was laughing, and so I just attacked her. You know, when, <laughs> as soon as you laugh, you, you're, you're open. up for it. That's right. Keep that in mind. We'll be right back with Billy Conley. Oh, we should we should say that before we say goodnight. You were just saying. You... Yeah, it was an extraordinary thing. I was listening to the radio in London, right. uh, and it was a talk program. And this woman, she's a bit, uh, she's a bit posh English and very, very, uh, really kind of condescending. Right, right. And she was interviewing a, a, a South African man, a black South African, and he was being very uh, radical in his outlook, as you tend to be in South. Everybody's yeah. bloody radical yeah, in one South Africa. So. And he, he lost patience with her, and he said, "Will you stop referring?" to the ANC and CATA problem as black on black, please. He said, stop uh, regarding it as a black on black problem. He right. said, until you start calling Serbia and Bosnia white on white, I will not tolerate it as black on black. And it just opened a whole door for me. I had never thought of it in that way myself. Yeah. Because I'd actually, in a kind of patronizing way, I suppose, thought, it's a shame they don't tidy that bit up before this bit. And, but it put me right in perspective. So you just open to learn, just and everything is like flowing into you. All of the time. All, I think it's an absolute prerequisite. If you're gonna, if you're gonna give out, you must, part of you must be, be open. If you're gonna yeah. transmit, all radios have a transmit and a right. receive. Right. You must, your receive must be open. And there are far too many people, in my opinion, who are on transmit. I think that's a great deal of the trouble in most yeah. countries. You know. Baby, I'm on receive today. <laughs> and so are they. Thank you, sweetie. Thank well, you'll you come so much, we'll do this again. Yeah? I'd love to. There's nothing I'd love more. Okay. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like one of those noises? <laughs> yeah. Yeah.